You know, I'm something of a scientist myself. I don't think anything really tops a smart villain, and I would say the Marvel Universe has some of the biggest brained baddies we've ever seen. But just what Marvel villains have the highest IQ? Well, that's what I'm discussing today. What are the elements that define a person's intelligence? Their tech prowess? Their manipulation skills? Their cunning? Well, these villains today have a little bit of everything, so join me as I break down the smartest of the smarties in today's video. Thanos, Doc Ock, Modoc, and a lot of surprises today, so let's get started. Plan B, human projectile. What's human projectile? <laughs> Dr. Victor Von Doom has got to be the person I start with on this list, because if I didn't, then I have a sinking suspicion that he'll find a way to bust out of the Marvel Universe, track me down, and do unspeakable horrors to me and my loved ones. So yeah, best to keep Doom happy. I have so little respect for those who do not know their place. <laughs> His arrogance, his ego, and his vast intellect all mesh together to make one of the smartest, most despicable baddies in Marvel Comics. How smart is he? Well, he's one of the rare individuals who went on and called themselves a doctor without ever having gotten a doctorate. Evil dictator? Yes. Actual doctor? Not so much. But Doom just sees himself as so smart that he feels he doesn't need to go into a lifelong commitment with student debt in order to call himself a doctor. And really, all the power to him for it. But does he have the smarts to back it up? Absolutely. Doom is god tier when it comes to intelligence and has been able to match wits and best some of the greatest beings in the universe. I always respect how Doom is smart in both mysticism and technology. He's like Tony Stark and Doctor Strange, who is an actual doctor by the way, rolled into one supreme baddie. I really hope when we see Doom in live action in the MCU, they highlight his intellect and show what a force to be reckoned with he can be. Now, if I told you Thanos was actually some sort of smarty pants, it might cause you a bit of hesitation, especially if you're only familiar with the Thanos from the MCU. It needs correction. You don't know that! Sure, you have to be smart to do what Thanos did in his time with the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but he was portrayed as more of a brute force who couldn't be stopped than some sort of intellectual. And maybe the MCU didn't think he was that smart to begin with, as apparently, as evidenced by What If, Thanos would have changed his mind rather quickly if someone like Black Panther ever sat him down and explained how nonsensical his plan was. Although I still assert my plan was not without its merits. Oh, Infinity War does show us that Thanos was smart enough to realize his planet was in trouble, but no one listened to him, which caused him to go off on his whole rebalancing the universe quest. So that's cool. But comic Thanos is even smarter, and we've seen him showcase his impressive brain power by doing things like creating all of his wonderful weapons, including his cosmic throne, capable of traversing through space and sometimes even to different dimensions. Yeah, I can't follow simple instructions to bake a frozen pizza, but Thanos can build a chair capable of space travel. Good for him. These next two entries are flipped versions of some of the smartest heroes in the Marvel Universe. First off, I'm starting with Superior Iron Man, who is the Tony Stark from another universe. That's basically every single bad thing Tony Stark could be without any of the good. The results are a little terrifying. So a super smart evil Tony is also a super egotistical Tony, and in his universe he's set about to build an evil empire for himself using his brains and technical wizardry. And it's disappointing that this Superior Iron Man just wanted to make even more money. One time, he was able to create and send out an extremist 3.0 virus disguised as an app to everyday people, which got them addicted to it and they would be forced to pay $100 a day for more. So yeah, the overall point of this entry is to say that the good version of Tony Stark is a genius who can invent and build almost anything, but an evil Tony Stark, stripped of his heart and his desire to help people, creates a ruthless monster who can do untold amounts of damage. And yes, I would totally love to see a superior Iron Man as a villain in the future of the MCU, thank you for asking. Alright, I talked about one flipped evil version of a Marvel hero, so now let's talk about the other big one. Reed Richards of Our Earth is arguably smarter overall than Tony Stark. Yeah, Tony is the tech genius, but when it comes to straight up IQ points, I think Reed Richards probably edges Tony out. So yeah, the evil version of Reed Richards is incredibly dangerous. His past is actually very similar to the normal Reed Richards with a few tragic differences. He was still the genius kid who eventually would grow up 
up to be a smart hero and founded the Fantastic Four, but that didn't last long. He had a slightly more obsessive relationship with both science and with Sue Storm, as well as craved a positive public opinion. So when the Fantastic Four disbanded and Sue rejected his marriage proposal, he went down a dark path that eventually led to him becoming the feared supervillain known as The Maker. And gotta say, very smart evil bad guy, very basic supervillain name. Couldn't come up with anything a little more menacing? Alright, but that's only a minor quibble, and the Maker is one of the most dangerous intellectuals in his universe. Some villains were born smart, others became smarter as time went on. The High Evolutionary falls into the latter category. This extremely smart bad guy started as just your average Joe named Herbert Windham in England. While studying in Oxford, he found that genetic manipulation sparked his interest, and then one thing led to another, and he altered his own genetics to become basically a godlike figure. He ascended from living with mere mortals to being on par with celestials and powerful cosmic entities. That's a major upgrade right there. There's a rumor that he'll show up in the Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 movie, and I would love to see what James Gunn does with the character and how his otherworldly intelligence meshes with the Guardians, uh, let's call it more street smarts. Dr. Otto Octavius, which yes, is in fact his real name, Tom Holland's Peter Parker, is the other doctor on this list, and to his credit, he does have an actual doctorate. He holds a PhD in nuclear science, which yeah, is what you say when you want to tell people you're really smart. Like, if you're at a dinner party and someone busts out that they have a PhD in nuclear science, then I at least know that I don't want to be stuck in a conversation with them because I won't know any of the big words they choose to use. Anyways, Doc Ock is wicked smart. And and yes, while he's one of Spidey's smartest villains, his ego might be the biggest out of anyone on this list. His ego is so big that when his consciousness was transferred into Peter Parker's body, he didn't just all of a sudden go on a huge criminal spree, no, he decided he wanted to try being Spider-Man to prove that he was the superior Spider-Man. And yeah, in a lot of ways it proved that Peter Parker was the true Spidey of that universe, but Ock did improve certain elements of the webhead's crime-fighting style in fun ways thanks to that big brain of his. Ultron's origin in the MCU is one of my favorite things ever. Because he was introduced as the villain of Age of Ultron, there was no time to create him and watch him slowly turn evil. Nope, they basically hit his power button, and then within seconds he had consumed all of the internet ever, and immediately decided mankind had to go. Smart robot. The thing with Ultron is because he can access pretty much all the information ever at any given moment, he's going to always be pretty smart. And he's also always upgraded. He's probably one of the smartest robots in the universe, but never stays stagnant. He will keep increasing his intelligence and tactical ability and just general IQ with every passing encounter with the Avengers. And yes, there's a lot of comic stories that prove how smart this bucket of bolts is, but in the MCU, the what if showed that his quest for knowledge and desire to conquer everything literally expanded dozens of universes. But in all formats that we've seen him, he's made from the essence of the smartest heroes around, so of course he's going to be a robot with a big brain. Kang the Conqueror's very origin proves how smart he is. Yes, his backstory is tremendously complicated at times, thanks to all the retcons and different versions of him, but the core of the story is that he's a guy from the future with the ability to easily time travel across the space-time continuum. Already, that's a base level of smartness that you and I will probably never reach. I don't think Kang cares about collateral damage, Pim. He wants us gone no matter who pays the price. Like, whoever can just perfect time travel and use it to their advantage has to be smart, or else everyone would be doing it. And he also has invented and put together all sorts of cool gadgets, weapons, and armor that proves he's a tech genius as well. Of course, though, that is a double-edged sword. Yes, he has created and invented all these cool weapons from the future, but they were also made from future tech, which I assume is easier to use if you're from that time. Like, hey, if I travel back to the 1800s and bring myself phone with me, people are going to assume I'm the smartest man in existence. The Leader is one of the remaining MCU villains that was introduced but never paid off properly. Sure, he comes from a movie where Bruce Banner looked like Ed Norton, but if they brought Thunderbolt Ross and Abomination back, then they could definitely still bring The Leader back. In the MCU, Samuel Stearns was infected with the classic Bruce Banner blood concoction and began his transformation into The Leader. We saw in a tie-in comic that almost immediately his brain power had increased exponentially, but then he was locked away by S.H.I.E.L.D., which is super unfortunate. 
because the leader is so incredibly smart, I think he'd make an excellent foil and nemesis for a Hulk standalone movie. Think about it, the Hulk has never been challenged in a movie by an intellectual opponent. All his fights have been about strength versus strength, but by pitting Hulk against the leader, then that puts Bruce Banner into the spotlight more and becomes a battle of warring intellects. I'm just saying it would be awesome. So what was I saying? Oh right, the leader is smart and with his giant head and watermelon sized brain, it's pretty clear his IQ is off the charts. Norman Osborn is a villain with many wonderfully villainous qualities. He's a ruthless businessman, a master manipulator, and has a ton of goblin serum coursing through his veins that, yes, enhances things like his intellect and his strength. But it also makes him incredibly crazy. He's arguably Spider-Man's greatest villain, and there's a reason a goblin has been a villain in like six Spider-Man movies now. Quick pop quiz, name every Spidey movie where the webhead fights a goblin. Quick, to the comments! Or, you know, finish the video first while you think, and and then, then go to the comics. Yeah, do that. Anyways, Norman Osborn is in a lot of ways an evil Tony Stark in the way he runs a company that has a weapons focus. He has all Tony Stark's ambition, and what he lacks in straight-up IQ points, he makes up for in ruthlessness and cunning. I mean, you have to be smart if you're able to orchestrate a situation where you help take down S.H.I.E.L.D., replace it with your own evil organization, and are able to start and lead the Dark Avengers. That takes brain power, and even though I've never understood his hairstyle in the comics, that head of his is housing one big brain. Alright, if you haven't seen Hulu's hilarious MODOK show, then I'm about to change your life. It's a hilariously raunchy and quite dark portrayal of the mental organism designed only for killing. I'm just moving out, I'm not dead. To mom you are. His comic origin sees MODOK with humble beginnings as a technician who worked for AIM. One thing led to another and he found that his body was basically mutated into a human supercomputer and his brain was altered where they grew it to an extreme size. But there was a problem. His brain was so ginormous, but the rest of his body stayed the same, which means his puny human bones couldn't support the weight of his massive brain, and thus he was placed in a highly advanced support unit that was called the Doomsday Chair. Yeah, MODOK rules, and he's the type of goofy but highly intelligent villain that needs to make a live action debut in the MCU very soon. There was a rumor going around that Jim Carrey was tapped to play MODOK in the MCU, and as of now, who knows if that's true. But if not, then they should just really let Pat and Oswalt play the part because he's crushing it on the MODOK TV show. Of course, then Pip the Troll from Eternals and MODOK would sound the same, but uh, that's alright, right? What I love about a lot of Marvel villains is that a ton of them are smart, but they're all basically smart in different ways. Like, they all have this one specialty they devoted their lives to, and now that the world's leading expert in whatever it is. Which brings me to Dr. Nathaniel Essex, who on top of the standard biology, physics, and engineering you find a lot of villains are great at, he's also one of the best at understanding cloning and gene mutation. He's so smart that he was able to work with celestial technology and found a way to extend his own life through gene mutation practically indefinitely. And on top of that, he was able to do this like back in the 1800s during a time where electricity was still a fancy new thing. Yet you try going back to that time period and perfecting gene mutation. It's difficult is all I'm saying. Wait, that was the real sinister, right? Alright, you've probably heard of just about every villain on this list before, but now I'm going to throw a slightly more obscure one at you. The villain's name is The Mad Thinker, which is the kind of goofy name you'd only find in a comic book. But since his debut, The Mad Thinker has always shown tremendous intellectual capabilities. From building computers that could predict future events, to manipulating events to disband the Fantastic Four, to creating an android that was specifically called the Awesome Android, yeah, The Mad Thinker seems like he could do it all. Arnim Zola is another doctor, but you don't see him flaunting his title like Doc Ock or Doctor Doom. But yeah, he's one of those smart dudes that was able to transfer his consciousness to a robotic body that allowed him to preserve his mind basically forever. He'll always pop back up and cause mischief one way or another, and his sidekick level personality will always make him a solid henchman to a big bad somewhere. He's a smart baddie, but just not the one that would ever challenge the people at the start of this list. I mean, no disrespect to Arnim Zola or or anything like that, but if I had to have a choice to fight Arnim or Ultron, then I'd choose Arnim. 
So the Tinkerer is at the bottom of this list, but you could also argue that he's one of the smartest villains out there. He's built a perfectly respectable resume, building trinkets, armor, and weapons of mass destruction for various supervillains over the years. You have any problem with your laser beam, or your jetpack, or your giant flaming retractable lightsaber, or whatever, then it's best to have the Tinkerer on speed dial. And I love that his backstory is relatively basic. So he's just a really smart scientist and engineer. He ran his own little repair shop, then and superheroes became more prominent and he was like, oh man, I hate those guys, and became a supervillain himself. That's sort of fun, right? Plus, his real name is Phineas Mason, which is just an A-plus comic book name in general. A man like the Tinkerer will always be in need, and that makes him invaluable to the entire Marvel villain catalog. Yeah, but really the big question is, which of these villains do you think could put together IKEA furniture the fastest? That's the true test of intelligence right there. My money's on Ultron because he's like one big IKEA robot, right? What do you guys think? 